Why reactions continue to trade the European Union report on the 2023 general election in Nigeria? President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has once again assured the business community of the federal government's commitment to policy consistency and a better business climate to attract investment to Nigeria. More so, in another progressive development last week, President Tinubu met with members of the Progressive Governors Forum and stated and stated that he will maintain an open-door policy, willing to entertain issues, deliberate, and collectively find solutions to the challenges facing the country. He stated that improved livelihood for Nigerians remains a top priority of his administration, with more people focused economic policies, assuring that the national minimum wage needs a review to reflect the current realities. He further stated that it was a good and encouraging sign that the APC has a majority in the National Assembly and some houses of assembly, which will make it easier to develop policies that will directly impact the economy and the people. Joining us now on the morning show to discuss the EU report, President Tinubu's implemented policies and the unified, unified exchange rate is George Agbakahi, a member of the Media and Publicity Directorate of the Dissolved Presidential Campaign Council of the All Progressives Congress and Satis leader, Tinubu Support Organization. Good morning, uh, Mr. Agbakai, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, Dr. Abati Rufai and um, Ayo. Okay. I appreciate it. Let's start with the front page uh, lead story in the uh, This Day newspaper of today. 30 days, 30 appointments, 30 challenges. It's been one month since uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, assumed office. What's your assessment? And what do you think of those challenges that the This Day uh, newspaper identified this morning? Well, thank you again for having me. I think the one month of President Bola Metinimbu's journey in office has been awesome. In fact, um, this one month has changed the, excuse me, he has, he has changed the trajectory, the trajectory of governance since the inception of you know, democracy in the Fourth Republic. Um, just check out the policies that he has undertaken in the past one month. The issue of removal of petroleum subsidy is pretty critical to social economic development of this country. He has done it. The issue of obliteration of the multiple exchange rate with the unified exchange rate, which is also germane to the social economic development of this great country, he has done it. The issue of students' loan, which is a people-oriented policy that will now affect probably over 40% of parents in this country, he has done it. There is a whole lot that he has done. Which one will I forget? Look, the World Bank even <laughs> said it. The fuel subsidy removal and the unified exchange rate will save Nigeria a substantial amount of 3.9 trillion naira. It has saved it so, so far. You know, 400 billion naira as you all know, has already been saved. And World Bank, I'm not quoting, World Bank also is estimating, you know, that between 2023 and 2025, Nigeria would have been saved about 21 to 25 trillion naira. Abati, Ruben and Ayo, Nigeria has gotten a president that is ready to work for the masses. He is taking very bold and resolute decisions. You know, I think even 
security wise you see what has been going on he has met with the service chiefs he has met with the traditional ruler he has met with the business communities you know he has assured them that it will no longer be business as usual listen let me tell you we all know the problems facing this country especially in terms of economy but it needed a president that has that boldness and resoluteness to tackle it you know this issue of oil subsidy he has been on for a very long time. Successive presidents have seen it and looked past it because they didn't have that political will. You know, the issue of unified exchange rate, this has been going on only a very few okay. members of our community have been benefiting from all these policies. But it took a president, you know, that has that courage to come and extricate this exploitative policies. All right, Mr. Bakahi, thanks for highlighting some of the successes, and this was also detailed in that this day report that Dr. Batu referred to. But part of that report also talked about the fallout of some of these policies. Yes, uh, all subsidy removal, fuel subsidy removal is one that a number of analysts, local and international, have praised. However, there's still that issue of the fallout of it because of the lack of provision of palliatives before the announcement. And so, the report highlighted people who have been thrown into poverty as a result of uh, the fuel subsidy removal, uh, the difficulty that Nigerians have experienced in the past few weeks since that announcement, and the lack of a following announcement yet of palliatives that will be provided for the most vulnerable. And then looking at education, they also talk about issues that the president would have to tackle, especially with regards to more funding for education and also the, um, you know, the evaluation of the introduction of student loans and perhaps throwing even again the poorest into further debt post-university education. What's your take on this and how can the president best address these concerns? I think, um, you know, the issue of palliatives in respect of the petroleum subsidy removal is, has been discussed extensively, you know, in government circle. You are pretty well aware that the, pre the, the you know, president people, the committee has met with the Nigerian Labour Congress as well as other consumer groups in ways to ameliorate the sufferings of the, you know, masses and the working people of this country. I think either the vice president is, is heading that committee, you know. The president is somebody who is pretty compassionate and, and he has great passion, you know, about this country. The, 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 the suffering we are talking about is something that will be transcendent. What we are really looking at is a, 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 a sustainable solution to the issue you know, of energy in this country. You know? And you will find out that in the long run, not even in the long run, in the midterm, these sufferings will ameliorate. Nigerians will start enjoying, there will be nothing like scarcity of fuel. You know, Dan Kote, a great Nigerian, has already started it with the building of a refinery. I bet you with this development, you know, you will see other Nigerians, you know, who are highly placed economically, like Odetela and others. I believe they will look into the area of, you know, building additional refineries. And now, foreign investors can now come in and participate in this venture. It's not like in the past, you know, where there are multiple exchange rates, you know, some people buy it for 468, some people buy it for um, 750, or even sometimes up to 800. Now it's at par, you know, and it will in the long run also bring down inflation in this country, you know. So that is what we are seeing. In the area of student loan, I bet this is the best policy, you know, that is purpose driven that this president has brought in place. You know, and there are, there are student education is key to the development of every nation. Our own is not different. You see a situation where, you know, relatively less privileged parents 
cannot be able to send their children to school. Come on. He's, this is a right decision. Okay, Mr. Education Bwakari. loan. Okay, and Mr. history and posterity will continue to remember President Bola Tinimbo okay, for Bwakari. instituting this program. Mr. Bakari, but, but Aswa has kicked against the student loan, says it's running away from the real problem of developing the educational sector. And we all know the problem student loan cause everywhere in the world. In America, President Biden was only recently begging you know, to be able to reduce student loan because most of those that take it can't repay. Uh, that's one. What would you like to say about that? Secondly, uh, how do we grow the economy? It's an, it's an all-time low. Bank of America says uh, inflation features could go up to 31%. How do we create productivity in this economy that's already on its knees? Well, it has already started. Look at the electricity bill that was signed into law. Unbundling of the generation and distribution sectors of the economy, of the electricity sector, in such a way that states can now benefit. States can now build you know, their independent power project. You know? And you know, the issue of estimated billing, exploitative, exploitative estimated billing, has been extricated. So these are areas that we now, you know, prop up the economy. Because there will be no development if there is no power, electricity. You, you see, let me tell you, the problems, economic problems of this country are all interrelated. Look at electricity, is a problem. Look at um, monetary policy, is a problem. You know, look at insecurity is a problem. So these are all the areas that the president is trying to tackle. And as soon as you tackle these areas, you will find out that the economy will triumph. Foreign investors will now come in, you know, and participate in the economic development of this country. You know, you see, let me tell you, you quoted America in respect of the student loan. Student loan in America has been ongoing you know, for the past over 50, 60 years, essentially because of the inequality in the system. You know fully well that you know, black Americans and some you know, uh, Hispanics are really unable, because of ec economic inequalities, to send their children to schools, to, to Harvard, you know, to MIT, or the Ivy League schools. You know, so that was why this particular student loan program was studied in America, and it has benefited hundreds, millions of Americans, including pres former President Obama. He said it publicly that himself benefited from the student loan program. You know, so this is all about American internal politics, which I don't want to get into. You know, President Biden said uh, it uh, uh, earlier in his speech Mr. last Bakai, time that Mr. he Bakai. looked for a way to get past it. M Mr. Bakai, but yes. the, the problem has always been how the students will pay back, and that's why I cited America, because even in America, the developed economy, how the students are going to pay back. And even when you look at the student loan bill, it was a bill we had in the 70s in this country. Uh, it was a student loan had been, there's a student loan board that we had in the 70s in this country, but it never worked out. And you've also answered the question of how we're going to you know, grow our productive prospects in the economy. You talked about, yes, the liberalization of many sectors, but that's not tantamount to growth. Well, the pathway, how this government is going to grow productivity in the economy. I mean, bring about productivity. Manufacturers, for instance, are complaining with electricity tariff that is going to stifle productivity. There are many problems everywhere. I mean, if you can give us practical, <coughs> empirical steps, please. Well, Growth and development of the economy is one that has also been discussed, you know, effectively by the government. You know, I think the issue of electricity is key. You know, uh, you're, you're talking of manufacturing, manufacturing. Manufacturing cannot take place in a situation where there is no adequate electricity. Manufacturing cannot take place in a situation where there is multiple exchange rates. These are all issues you know, that militate, you know, against manufacturing. Uh, the, the president talked eloquently about the issue of agricultural hubs. 
You know, this is key. You know, agriculture in the past has been the mainstay of the economy of this country. You know, with creation of creation and establishment of agricultural hubs as well as you know commodity boards, whereby the the, the farmers, subsistence farmers, you know, can be able to bring their you know um, farming farm products to the market and sell it and make profit, and at the same time, the consumers will not cry in respect of inflation. These are all areas. And you, have you also forgotten the president talked about the issue of um, culture and tourism? Tourism is key, you know, for the development of any country. You know, okay. Nigeria has a lot of tourist attraction. You know, and you see, when, when, we get into, when we get into tourism proper, you know, we'll be able to get huge exchange earnings, you know, and this will help in the economic development of this country. President also talked about Mr. the issue Bakai. of, um, um, yes. Let's go beyond policies. <clears throat> we all know that with regard to policies, the taste of the pudding, as they say, in that cliche, is in the eating. So we have to see the implementation of these policies, the impact, and the capacity of the government to monitor and evaluate them. And if the policies succeed, how future governments and other satellite uh, units, you know, would uh, process uh, those policies. Let's talk politics. I like your comment on the, uh, the process in the National Assembly about the leadership, Senate majority leader, Senate uh, minority leader, and also the jostling for power at the um, ministerial level, with every Dick and Harry saying they want to be minister. Uh, just because uh, they have to paste uh, a poster during uh, the campaigns for the APC. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, a lot has been talked about in respect of the issue of the leadership of the Senate and House of Representatives. You know, we are all aware that the Senate has elected a president as well as a deputy president and the house has elected um, speaker and deputy speaker and those are men of impeccable integrity that i believe can work in harmony with the with the um, executive for the betterment and development of this great country you know i i don't really have much to say in respect of the issue of majority leader uh, of the house or senate you know the most important you know, to, to Nigerians, uh, the Senate president and the deputies, as well as the, that, that's the top echelon, you know, of the leadership, you know. But I believe, you know, the, the Senate and the House, you know, they have their mechanism. And they also have that capacity, you know, to elect whoever they want at, as a um, majority leader of the Senate and majority leader of the House, and also minority leader of the House and the Senate. All right, so uh, the president has been said to be action president, been working really hard in the first 30 days, has done in no made a number of um, um, changes, appointments, some appointments, as we mentioned. We're looking forward to the ministerial appointments. In terms of the Southeast, where you represent, what are some of the things that you're looking forward to the president doing. A number of people have said the quick win would have been to address the Nandekanu issue, which he has kept quiet on so far. Yesterday he met to the um, <coughs> service chiefs, first meeting since the appointment on the 19th of June. What are some of the things that you're looking forward to from Mr. President for the Southeast? He'd made some promises during campaign season. It's time to <coughs> fulfill them. What are your priority areas? It is common knowledge that our president is a seasoned politician. He is a legend in politics and one that has politics in his genes. He is a father figure who recognizes the abilities of all geopolitical zones of this country. He has never been discriminately, you know, either in, in his previous position as governor of of um, Lagos states, you know, all his, poli all his policies and appointments while he was governor 
has been devoid, you know, of um, ethnicity, of religion, you know. So this is a president who knows what he wants. And I believe the Southeast talk will be recognized in the appointment of Mr. President. For example, we are pretty delighted that our brother, um, we Admiral Ogala has been appointed the chief of Naval staff. It is a team of joy. And in that respect, we also believe that the president will consider Southeast, you know, in other appointments. I believe in politics, when election is, when election is over, no victor, no vanquish. So long as the party has won the election. So I don't think the president will take into consideration the fact that um, Southeast, you know, did not vote for him, you know, enormously in the election. And based on that, he will try to punish Southeast. The president is not like that. Oh, I Mr. believe Bakai. he will consider all Mr. geopolitical zones of this country. Mr. Bakai, beyond appointments, then, beyond appointments, expectations, issue of Namdi Kanu, what are your expectations from the president beyond appointments? Well, I think the, the, the issue of Namdekano is a global issue. And the president discussed this issue when he campaigned in Ebony State. And as a member of the presidential campaign council from Southeast, I was privileged to be in that um, campaign rally. The president said it openly that he will work with Igbo leaders, you know, to deal with issues, you know, that are affecting Igbos. More especially, you know, the issue of um, Nandekano and the IPOB, you know, the issue of um, unknown government. So I believe that the president will do that at the right time. But like, like I said, in my own personal opinion, personal opinion, I believe at some point, you know, based on the current political development in the country. At some point, Nandikano may have to be released, even if it is under, you know, some conditions, you know, because if you see what is going on in the Southeast, it's preposterous. I can tell you that currently in the Southeast, you know, this issue of unknown gunmen, you know, and this issue of, you know, um, sit at home orders every Monday. It has affected commerce, you know, tremendously. You know, people in the Southeast are living with fear, you know. So I believe that the president, you know, at the appropriate time, will consider all these issues holistically and do the right thing. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. George Agbakai, for joining us on The Morning Show.